All right. Hello, Ruben. Hi, Pamela. Oh, we have so much to talk about today. Um, let's see, where should we get started? Um, you know, something that people might not know about you is that you were a successful touring musician before you found photography. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Sure. Um, yeah, I spent, uh, well, um, I formed a band with my friends back in 2000, well, before 2000, it was 1999. And um, it was a, pretty much a hobby. You know, I was a DJ, he was a producer. Um, and uh, we knew, and, uh, and, and uh, we had two other friends who were vocalists. And so we kind of thought, let's, let's do this thing and, and make the music that we want to make that no one else was making. And so we started doing that. And, you know, immediately our first single got into the, the enemy single of the week. And, and so it was a pretty cool kind of side hustle along with my, the job, the design job that I was doing at the time. And so while I was working as a designer, I was also going on tour, taking, you know, time off to go on tour across Europe and America. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, we released six albums. Yeah, six studio albums. And, um, you know, we pretty much solid, solid, uh, toured solidly for about 10 years. Um, I did end up leaving my, my job in design, um, really because of just all of the opportunities that were coming in from music and travel. And um, it really was, you know, the music was extremely rewarding, but also um, it was the touring with that we, that we were doing with the band that really motivated me to get into photography. So, you know, if I hadn't done the band and if I hadn't done all this touring, I wouldn't be a photographer now. Say more about that. Why is that? Well, as I was saying, you know, with, with the band, we were touring all over the world and you know, I started to, um, you know, as, as a person who really enjoyed drawing, um, I found that it was too time consuming to draw the things around me. And so that's how I picked up a camera and really, you know, it became like a tour diary of the places that we were traveling to. And we were traveling to, you know, incredible places like uh, North America, South America, all across Europe, um, China, Russia, Australia. And, um, you know, so photography grew with the travel and... <laughs> I think yeah, I remember you telling me that you even put a camera on a Palm Pilot. So did you start with digital or how, what happened there? Um, yeah, I got into Palm Pilots when I was working in design. Um, and it was just like, they were just the most geeky things and they didn't, they, they didn't have cameras. Um, okay. There was just these liquid crystal display organizers. Um, and then like a new one came out that, that had this camera attachment to it. Um, and so I started taking pictures using that and they were really kind of really low bit, you know, like low resolution, horrible kind of black and white pictures. Um, and, and then I kind of upgraded to like a, a, a normal phone with the first built in camera. Um, and so, so I've been, playing with phone cameras from, you know, the very beginning. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I did um, start taking pictures on digital cameras, but then I think I, I became disillusioned with, with digital photography because um, when I first bought a DSLR, um, I found that every, you know, the, every photo that came out just there was nothing to it. I didn't understand how it was made. It just came out. I didn't know what, you know, there didn't seem to be any kind of opportunity for creativity there. Um, and then that's when I discovered film photography. And with film photography, I, I, I 
saw the difference in quality between digital and film photos. You know, there was this texture, there was this beautiful kind of, um, um, beautiful quality to the negative that digital didn't have. And, and so I really started experimenting with that. And, um, you know, I put the DSLR away and picked up, um, you know, a Lomo camera, uh, a Polaroid, um, SX-70, um, a Holger, um, a Mamiya. And, um, you know, I, I, I ended up taking all of these cameras with me to all of these places that I was touring. And, you know, it was my way of, of kind of seeing and documenting these places uh, in a way that, to me, hadn't been done before. Rather than just pick up a camera and take a picture of a place, I was using a specific camera with a specific film and a specific lens, maybe using a specific technique um, to try and, um, I suppose, just document it in a completely different way. It, what were those pictures like in, the, in those days? Um, I mean, it was all like, you know, uh, I did a lot of Polaroid photography, but I also, you know, learned how to kind of hack these cameras. Because of my background in design, I was interested in how these cameras worked, so... I was figuring out how to kind of make them do things they weren't designed to do. Um, and so in that way, I was able to experiment more and more. And I just found there was a lot of freedom and a lot of kind of, um, there was so much more to just picking up a camera and taking a picture. You know, it became like a ritual. It became like, a, you know, um, this real experience it was almost like there was more of a purpose for me to go to these places. You know, when we've talked about this before, this is also when you talk about this idea of alchemy. And I love that word when you refer to photography. I love the idea of being able to reveal something hidden about what I'm photographing. Something that the eye doesn't see. So I've always, I've always seen um, at the time when I was, you know, beginning to experiment with film photography and all of these different types of cameras, that it became like alchemy. And I was trying to reveal something that was just every day, um, and, but reveal a kind of magic which was there that, that only film and only these techniques could, um, could bring out. And so, you know, things like um, experimenting with expired film, experimenting with things like infrared film, um, using long exposures. I think the long exposure thing is really interesting because it's, you're basically using the camera just to capture light and capture more light than the human eye ever could. So I really like this idea of, um, the camera being able to um, reveal so much more about the landscape than, than the eye can see. And this is such an evolution already because I feel like when you talk about, you know, you picked up photography when you were touring as a musician, it was kind of this tour, this, uh, tour diary you mentioned, but now we're starting to talk about something kind of not so much a documentary of, reality or a kind of the journey that you're on and something different, something that the eye can't see. I, I guess my experience on tour started out being very kind of, you know, one all 100% into performing with the band and being in a band and all of the lifestyle that goes with being in a band. Um, but it started to shift really. And uh, I was, I definitely needed, there was some, I don't know, there was some, I don't know, something buried deep inside me that was telling me to get back into visual art stuff. 
and and so for me using photography in a way that I would be you know it's almost like you know getting my fulfillment from what I used to do as a as a as a drawing person and taking that from photography so using photography as as that medium as 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 a real kind of creative medium which has a that element of craft to it so it did become more and more involved and more and more um you know i just dedicated more and more of my time to it so much so that i started to book time off like time in advance while touring so i'd go to a place a week later or two weeks later and just travel and take pictures and then rejoin the band kind of like what i was doing with my design job <laughs> <laughs> and so i think this is a critical point in your photography because you know we talk a lot about the decisive moment and and you've really started to create this you know space where I think you talk a little bit about time scale and kind of um, it's not one moment, but fill in the blank. Yeah, it's not about a decisive moment. It's more about, um, you know, it's, it's, it's like a sustained moment in time. It's, it's, it's a, a totality of it, of events. Um, and I think it, it you know, I think it speaks to, you know, what the landscape is a little bit more um, in how these places were formed over, over millions and millions of years. Um, I just want part of my process to kind of speak to that idea of, of a geologic timescale um, mm -hmm. rather than um, a split second moment in time and the resulting pictures i think people tend to call them otherworldly or like you're seeing an alien planet um is this kind of the effect you've been going for well the effect i've been going for is is not to show that it's an otherworldly place it's it's i'm trying to show that this is actually our own planet mm -hmm. and trying to force people to see it in a different way so, you know, one of my, one of my main goals in, in photography is to show something that might be familiar, but under a, an unfamiliar light, to just show it in a different way. And I think that's, that's, you know, a, a huge part of my practice. And um, it does make people look at an image longer. It makes people ask questions about... Um, about who we are and about where we are and uh and about time itself it's it's quite a, quite a huge um subject really but um i think it just allows me to allows me to really take my time with photography. You know, I think my personality definitely leans towards um, working on the craft of photography and being able to take my time and, okay, I don't have to set everything up for a split second moment. I'm in these places and I can spend all night making one photo because because I want to. And I, I like the idea of just being able to really prepare and really plan and, and, and try and experiment all of the, these different things and, and also be very open to serendipity. Um, things that you might not expect um, that can happen, which might take you into a different, more interesting direction. You know, as you're telling me this, I have this image of you out, you know, in the dark in a huge landscape and you're 
essentially creating a world for us to see when you bring back, you know, you say it takes all night to get one photo like that. Um, it feels a little bit like sci-fi actually in this idea that you're building a world and creating the space that you see in your mind's eye. Yeah, I mean, I, I am a sci-fi fan, so I am kind of reliving that, <laughs> that childhood passion. Um, you know, films like Close Encounters of the Third Kind and Blade Runner, 2001, A Space Odyssey, are all films that have had a real effect on me. And it's, re it's really the films which are closer to our world than the, the films which are kind of in a far-flung galaxy, you know, that, that vibe with me more, just because they're, you know, they take place on our world. And it is the familiar under an unfamiliar light. And it's, it's this kind of slight hint of, um, of something altered, which I think is really, really interesting and very impactful to me when some something subtle is different and oh, so I love that. yeah and so when i'm in these places um you know it, it's almost like um you know it, it is a playground you know i'm i'm in these spaces i i don't feel um scared in, you know in in these spots at, at all you know I feel very um you know at ease and uh you know it's it's one of the few places that I feel that I can just um do whatever I want to you know to be creative and to experiment let's talk a little bit about what that looks like so when you're out there and when you're saying you're doing whatever you want there's you're in are you still shooting on, you have this like film background, but you're also quite known for the technology that you employ in your work. You know, this mix of low fidelity and high fidelity techniques. Yeah, I think a lot of my work is, is uh, about the a kind of hybrid between old and new. Mm. Um, you know, one thing about my film photography was that I was trying to take pictures that kind of didn't, didn't they shouldn't really exist because I was playing with these age old cameras with this film that is, was expired in these crazy places that no one, that no one had kind of shot that film before in. Um, so I was interested in that kind of weird kind of impossibility um, about those images. And I think with, you know, I, I shoot on digital, totally now, but I, I think I still take that, um, you know, that concept of film photography and, and, um, and that sort of thing in, in how I create pictures now. Um, so I think with, with, with my work, I'm always interested in new, in new technology and you know, how I can, um, you know, what are the different ways that we can use this new technology? And is there a, is there a new different way that, that we can use it? It's not like trying to invent something completely new, but creating something fresh just by combining different things and having fresh ideas about existing things. So, you know, I, and I see that you've been experimenting with that in um, these prints that you have. Um, and I don't even quite know what I'm looking at. Maybe you can tell me. <laughs> Right, yeah. Um, so, I love making prints. Um, I spent time uh, about ten, uh, about eight years ago, uh, learning how to make prints and learning how to edit my work, how to scan negatives, um, you know, how to mount it, how to frame it, and how to you know how to put together an exhibition. And so, since then, I've been very much a proponent of. Um, the the print being the best way to view a photograph um, and so in the past few years I've been experimenting with uh, more kind of 
uh, motion work, um, time lapse and stop motion, and obviously the uh, the work I've been doing with um, aerial lighting using drones. Um, and I've been been able to evolve that process into a kind of new medium, which is kind of part time lapse, part stop motion, um, kind of like a moving photograph, um, which I find really interesting. Um, and, and these are kind of like very short looping videos, um, which are only about four to eight seconds long, but they just, you know, because of Instagram's looping um, feature, they just keep continue to loop perpetually. And I just find myself just like staring at it and just it, it <laughs> loops over and over and over again. And so I, I was really intrigued by, by this idea and also interested in how this can possibly be presented in um, like a physical space, like in a gallery or even your own home. And so I was thinking of how I can combine what I was doing with prints with um, a new technology um, that I was thinking about um, called um, AR projection mapping. So I, I was, the idea is that part of the um, video which is moving, which is not moving, is printed and that is the print but the part of the other part which is moving is projected and so there is a projector that uh, projects the moving part onto the physical print itself and so what you see is kind of a combination of digital and analog which you know obviously is not you know it's not a screen on the wall it's not using your your phone or a tablet to kind of look through. Um, it's like naked eye um, AR. And wow. so it's pretty cool to, to see, actually. So I've been experimenting with that. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so I've been producing these, basically they're single edition uh, prints, which come with their own projector. And, uh, you know, Whoever owns that will own this, you know, will own the, the video piece, but they'll also own the physical piece to have in their home and to have the have it moving. So it's pretty fun. So you really, um, this comes a little bit full circle in terms of this creative process that you're going through to create the work and then how the work is seen. Um, it's always been this mix of kind of, traditional and experimental, like on, on the edge of um, an unknown space. Um, how do you feel, it's, you know, from your journey as a touring musician who was just dabbling in photography as a hobby till today, where you're in this, in the eye of the storm of this conversation now um, and pushing out work that no one has seen before? Um, well, you know, I've always, I've always been an outsider, you know, since, since I was a kid. And so being an outsider was kind of essential. Well, it kind of, it was always there and I hated being an outsider at first. And then I, later on, I kind of learned to embrace that. So, you know, that's something that I've always kind of kept with me. And, and I think that is, you know, an important part of who I am and what my work is all about. I definitely feel like I'm, like creatively, I'm the happiest I've ever been. You know, I've found something that I can put every like I can put everything into. You know, it's not just photography, but it's also music. It's also um, uh, motion work, and I can put all of those different disciplines together in into this new medium. And so I feel that. All of the things I've done in the past, you know, design, music, um, drawing, all of those have kind of aligned together and co have converged together at this moment to, to kind of um, allow me to make the work that I wouldn't be able to make if I hadn't done any of those. So 
I don't see this as like the, the, you know, the end point of where, what I'm doing, but I definitely see it as, as a very, very, um, important moment in my creative arc. And I'm, I'm still gonna keep exploring and keep, keep experimenting, um, with different mediums and just, um, you know, who knows what else I'm going to be doing next. It might not even be photography, but it's definitely going to be, you know, maybe something else, which is a combination of different things to create something new. That seems like a, a good pause point for our conversation today. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, yeah, I, I, you know, one thing I've been thinking about is, you know, when people, you know, you can say all you like about yourself and you, you can put as much as you want in your bio, your artist bio, your artist statement. Um, but I feel that you can, when people see my work, you know, there are aspects of my personality in there. You know, when people see my work, you're seeing me and you're seeing all of the experiences that I've, that I've had in the past. Um, all of those kind of make sense in the art that I make. Thank you, Ruben. Thanks, Pamela.